There are two basic ways to recognize revenue in a long-term contract situation. The first is called the completed contract, which means we wait until the end when we've completed the contract and then we book our revenue minus our cost of goods sold to give us our total gross profit. This is misleading and the IRS doesn't like it because you're not paying any taxes until the last year of the contract. The better way to do it is the percentage of completion method which books a certain percentage of the revenue minus a certain percentage of the cost of goods sold gives us a certain percentage of the gross profit every year. Let's start with the completed contract method. So let's assume we have a project that's going to cost us $2,600,000 and we're going to bill our client $3 million for it. In other words, we're going to make $400,000 worth of gross profit. Let's assume the first year we do a million forty thousand dollars worth of work. In other words, we take a million forty thousand dollars worth of direct materials, direct labor, and overhead, and turn them into a construction project, which is our inventory account. Then we send out bills for a million dollars. We debit accounts receivable. But instead of crediting a revenue account in a construction long-term construction contract, we're going to credit this progress billings account. It's not a revenue account, it's a contra asset account. So it's an asset account with a credit balance. So if you looked at our balance sheet, you'd see we have a million forty thousand dollars of this inventory asset minus what we've billed so far, so we have a net asset of forty thousand dollars. In this example, I'm going to use black font to symbolize balance sheet accounts and red font to signify income statement accounts. As you can see, there were no journal entries related to the income statement. So on our income statement, we're not showing any activity during this first year. Second year, we do some more work. So we take some direct materials, direct labor and overhead, turn it into our inventory item. We send out another $900,000 worth of bills and we credit our contra asset account for another 900,000. So our totals on our balance sheet Years one and two are one million nine hundred fifty thousand dollars of our inventory asset minus a million nine hundred thousand dollars of our contra asset account means we have a net asset of fifty thousand. By the way, if we had billed out more than we'd done, this would be a liability account that would show up on our right hand side of our balance sheet. There's no red journal entries in this section either. So for 2014 and 2015, we've booked no revenue minus no expenses. We get to the third year and we finish the project. So in other words, our last $650,000 worth of cost to take us up to $2,600,000, direct materials, labor and overhead were converted into our inventory item called construction in progress, in progress and we also billed our client the last million one hundred thousand dollars. So we look at our balance sheet now and when we post those journal entries we have our inventory asset on our books for two million six, our contra asset account called progress billings with a credit balance of three million. So we've got a four hundred thousand dollar credit. Remember credits represent gains sometimes. So it kind of makes sense that we would have a $400,000 credit balance. So now we just have to take this two million six off our balance sheet and put it on our income statement. We'll do that. It has a debit balance. So we'll credit it for two million six and turn it into our cost of goods sold account, which we're going to call cost of long-term contracts. How do we get rid of this $3 million? The $3 million was a credit balance, so we're going to debit it for $3 million, and we're going to credit our revenue account, revenue from long-term contracts. So this journal entry at the very end takes these balance sheet accounts and transforms them into income statement accounts so that finally we get to book something on our income statement. $3 million worth of revenue minus $2,600,000 worth of cost gives us $400,000 worth of gross profit. Okay, that was the completed contract method which we're never ever going to get to use because it's misleading. Instead, we're going to use the percentage of completion contract method which looks at how much the contract have we completed each year and we book the appropriate percentage of revenue and the appropriate percentage of costs 
cost of goods sold, which is going to get us the appropriate amount of gross profit on our income statement. First of all, somewhat counterintuitively, all those journal entries we made before stay exactly the same. To get the, some of these dollars onto our income statement, we're going to make another journal entry each year. So let's assume that during the first year, we compare our costs to date to our total cost to be incurred, and we discover we're 40% of the way done. So we're going to book 40% of our revenue. 40% of $3 million is $1,200,000. 40% of our costs is $1,040,000. And the difference between this credit and this debit is a debit of $160,000, which is 40% of our gross profit. $400,000 times 40% is $160,000. So we'll post these guys, the red journal entries are on our income statement. We're gonna put them on our income statement. We have a million dollar, million two hundred thousand dollars worth of revenue minus a million forty thousand dollars worth of cost of goods sold. It gives us gross profit of $160,000. And we're gonna take this $160,000 of debit and add that to our construction and progress. So now this thing is being carried on our books at net realizable value. And in fact, the asset is now on our net asset is on our books for $200,000. We get to the second year, we compare our costs to date to our total cost estimated and we're 75% of the way done with the job. We've already booked 40% of it, so we just have to book 35%. 35% of our revenue, $3 million times 35% is $1,050,000. 35% of our costs, 35% of $2.6 million is $910,000. And the difference is this $140,000. That happens to be 35% of our gross profit. So let's post that balance sheet journal entry up there. And now that asset is on our books for the $1,950,000 of costs plus the $300,000 of gross profit minus what we've built so far, a net of $350,000. Let's post these red font entries down here and update our income statement. So this year we have $1,050,000 worth of revenue minus cost of goods sold of $910,000 gives us gross profit of $140,000. We get to the last year of the contract and we finish it up. So we take the last $650,000 of materials, labor and overhead, and turn it into our inventory item of uh, construction in progress for $650,000. We send out our last bills, and we book our last progress billings, our last contra asset account bill, uh, entry. So now, if you look at our balance sheet, it's on there for zero. This is our actual costs. This is our estimated, our actual gross profit at this point, minus what we build out. So in other words, we're going to credit revenue from long-term contracts for the last 750,000. We put a million two plus a million 50. So another $750,000 would give us our total of three million. Lastly, you have to book our cost of goods sold account, it was supposed to be 2.6 million. So 2.6 million actually incurred minus this, minus this, means we have $650,000 worth of cost of goods sold to book. So if you look at our income statement, it has for that last year, $750,000 worth of revenue, minus $650,000 worth of cost of goods sold to give us gross profit of $100,000. But, we still have one journal entry left to do. Construction in progress is still on our books with a debit of $300,000, million, and progress billings is still on our books for a credit of $3 million. I mean, admittedly, they balance each other or cancel each other out, I guess would be a better word. But what we're going to do is take them off our books completely. They're both balance sheet accounts. Progress Billings has a $3 million credit, so we'll debit it for $3 million. Construction in Progress had a total of $3 million worth of debits, so we'll credit it for $3 million. And so now there's nothing left on our balance sheet, and everything has been moved to our income statement. 40% of it here, another 35% of it here, 
and the last of it here in the final year. Big picture, completed contract basis, books all the revenue when the contract is completed, that's misleading. We prefer to use the percentage of completion method that books a little bit of revenue and a little bit of cost of goods sold each year, giving us a little bit of gross profit each year as we go along. All right, I hope that makes the example in your book easier to read.